Hello, this is Ian Folklesung, and this is the Installing Ivy video. First, uh, build from source, if you can build from source, and the source for the Lund Discovery toolset is on GitHub at hitachi-data-systems slash lund underscore discovery. And the source for Ivy is uh, on GitHub at Hitachi hyphen data hyphen systems slash Ivy. And uh, both Lun Discovery and Ivy are built using the code blocks IDE, or you could make your own make file. We'll be posting uh, binaries somewhere as well, pre built binaries uh, for convenience, but we haven't figured out exactly where to put them yet, so that'll be uh, updated later. So, the, in terms of what executables there are, Ivy itself has a main executable called Ivy, and then it has um, Ivy Slave, which is the executable which is remotely uh, invoked by Ivy using SSH on each of the uh, IO driver or test hosts. And then, um, uh, this doesn't happen all that often, uh, but there are some failure modes which may leave orphan threads hanging, either on the Ivy master hosts or on test hosts. So you can use the clear hung Ivy threads as a, a convenient tool to um, clear up any of these hung threads. And when you run Ivy, it makes a clear hung Ivy threads dot sh uh, script. And then um, if you run that script on the master host, it'll clear the hung threads and all the test hosts. The Ivy command device connector is a Hitachi proprietary um, piece of software. It, it's not part of the Ivy open source project. Uh, and it's also remotely invoked using SSH on whichever test host has a command device to a subsystem under test. It's available only to authorized Hitachi internal users and employs a license key mechanism. Finally, the LUN Discovery toolset is comprised of a couple of executables, inquire about headers, which just prints a header line, and then the inquire about executable, which issues SCSI inquiry commands to a particular slash dev slash x sdxx uh, LUN, and then it decodes all the Hitachi specific attributes for you. That's separately packaged from IV. I imagine that people will be using it a lot more often than they use uh, IV itself. It's very convenient to discover what LUNs you have on a particular host, a Linux host, and what the Hitachi attributes are of those LUNs. The show LUNs.shell script um, spins through all the slash dev slash SDXX LUNs uh, on a host and runs the inquire about executable uh, against each of those LUNs to produce a CSV file with a header line that comes from inquire about headers. You have to put the executables in a folder somewhere. On my own host, I put them in user local bin. Um, uh, for HDS performance team users, if your test host has slash scripts mapped to our filer, the, ex the executables are in scripts IV bin and you can run them from there. I've link edited IV with dynamic links to the normal C library routines, um, but it's statically linked to the standard C++ library. And that's because uh, not all of our test hosts in the lab have up-to-date C++ libraries. Now, the important thing about installing IV is that the executables have to be in a folder that non-foreground processes can see. And normally where you think of um, editing a bash or Etsy profile, uh, login profile script and putting your executables in the path at that point. But for non-foreground, for background processes, the bash profile scripts uh, don't get executed. Um, but the scripts in Etsy slash Etsy slash profile dot D get, get run for all processes, whether they're foreground or background processes. So what you want to do is um, make sure you update one of the scripts in or put a special script in slash Etsy slash profile dot D that puts the IV binaries uh, in the path for all processes, foreground and background. And here's an example of a script that just does that for a host where the binaries are in slash script slash IV slash bin. And then you take this script and you put it in slash Etsy slash profile dot D and then the binaries will be visible for all processes. The other thing is that IV uses uh, SSH to remotely fire up the IV slave executable 
to remotely run um, the show lawns, the shell script, and retrieve the configuration on each one of the test hosts, and also uh, for Intachi internal users in the lab, uh, it uses this SH to run the IV command device connector. In order for this to work, you have to set up your hosts to use certificate-based SSH logins. And that means that a password is not needed to be entered. It just automatically transparently works based on certificates. So search for certificate-based SSH logins to find instructions on how to do this. Then um, I run IV as root when I'm running it. Um, I haven't determined yet whether it's absolutely required. It may be that when I do IO, when we do IOs uh, from IV Slave to a raw device, that you you must be root to do that. That may be entirely possible. Then the other thing is that the inquire about executable that issues SCSI inquiry commands absolutely does need to run as root in order to have the privilege to issue SCSI inquiry commands. And therefore, I uh, uh, set the inquire about executable set UID and own by root. When you run IV on the command line, you say IV and then you give it the name of, a, uh, of an IV script program that you're going to run. The output from that IV run goes into a folder that's created in the IV output folder root directory. And by default, the output folder root is dot the current directory. So if you have a, a script, something dot IV script, and you say IV something or IV something dot IV script, it'll create a directory called something right there, and it'll put all the output in it. To put the output somewhere else, anywhere in your IV script program, you put the statement output folder root, and then you give it a string literal with the name of the output folder the root folder in which all of the um, output from IV goes. And then note for this one IV script statement, the op operand must be a string literal. It cannot be a string expression. And that's because IV creates the output folder for a test run after compiling the program, but before the program starts to run. And for that reason, we, uh, we can't evaluate a, s a string expression, but it's got to be a string literal. That's it. That's all there is to uh, installing Ivy. Thanks.